So right now we're going to be looking at this provided position versus time graph. And from that, we're going to construct a velocity versus time graph. Once we have that velocity time graph constructed, we're going to see two different ways to calculate the displacement of an object within a given time interval. So to get started with, we're going to look at our position time graph. Right here, our time ranges from 0 to 4 seconds, our position ranges from 0 to 4 meters. We have two discrete slopes. We have, from 0 to 2 seconds, slope 1. And then, from 2 to 4 seconds, slope 2. Now, the slope of a position versus time graph represents the velocity of the object. Now, if we have a time interval where that slope is constant, we can calculate our velocity using point-slope formula. So a change in the y-axis variable over the change in the x-axis variable. In this case, it is our change in position over our change in time. Now, it is very important to remember that this is going to be a calculation for velocity when the slope is constant. If the slope is changing, all this accomplishes is calculating the average velocity, which is what that bar on top of the V represents. But right now, because it is a constant slope, we can maintain that's a constant velocity in this time interval. So, our change in position is our final position minus our initial position, and that's the same with our time. Change in time is final time minus initial time. The final position, or the position at 2 seconds, is 4 meters. And the initial position in this range is the position at 0 seconds, which would be 2 meters. And then the time, the final time will be 2 seconds in that interval. The starting time is 0 seconds. So the change in position, or the displacement, is 2 meters. And that occurs over a time period of 2 seconds. So 2 meters divided by 2 seconds is 1 meter every one second, which is the slope of that first region of the graph. It is also the velocity from zero to two seconds. So on my velocity time graph, I'm going to draw a horizontal line to show that we have a positive one meter per second velocity. Now I can calculate the slope of region two using the exact same equation. Our average velocity I should maybe I should have the time ranges here. So the average velocity from 0 to 2 seconds is represented in blue, and the average velocity from 2 to 4 is represented in red. Once again, it's the exact same thing. We're calculating the displacement, change in position, over the change in time. It's still final minus initial. However, that final is the position at a time of 4 seconds, and the initial is that position at a time of 2 seconds. Same with our times, 4 and 2. So the final position at 4 seconds is 0 meters, and the starting position at 2 seconds is positive 4 meters, and then time just 4 seconds minus 2 seconds. So once again, we have that 2 second time interval. However, the position decreases by 4 meters in that time interval. So on average, the velocity in this region is negative 2 meters every 1 second. So on my velocity time graph, I'm going to be showing that. Now, one thing that I'm not going to be doing on my velocity time graph is connecting these two points from here to here. The reason why I'm not doing that is if I did draw a straight line connecting these two, it would imply that there'd be an infinite amount of velocities at a time of exactly two seconds, ranging from positive one meter per second all the way down to negative two meters per second. We don't have enough information at this point to talk about what that means, but we should know that it would be impossible for an object to have multiple velocities at the exact same point in time. So right now we're just going to have a discontinuity in our graph in that region. But the way that we calculate those velocities for our velocity time graph was just by looking at the slope of the position time graph. And when we're trying to calculate displacement on a position time graph, that one we have up on top, that's our position versus time graph. Displacement is really straightforward. It is literally just final minus initial when it comes to our positions. 
However, we also do have this second graph down here. We have this graph that is our velocity time graph, and we actually can figure out our displacement from that. Now, if we look at the region between the curve and the time axis on our velocity time graph, the region that I am cross-hatching right now, we can see that that is a rectangle. Now, the area of a rectangle, it's going to be base times height, length times width, what have you. Um, I'm just going to have it as height times width. That's my preferred format. Now, in this case, our height here is going to be our velocity, and our width is going to be the time interval that we are looking at. So if I focus on this first uh, cross-hatched region, it's a constant velocity of positive one meter every one second. And that change in time is from zero to two seconds, which is two seconds. If I multiply these by each other, one times two is two. And then the fact that I have a second on the bottom and a second on the top means those units cancel out, leaving just meters. Those are the units of position. And if we were to see this two meters here, we can also see it's the same as this region up here. That is the displacement from zero to two seconds. And we can calculate that on a velocity time graph by taking the area under the curve on a velocity time graph. That's area under the curve. Now, when we have a constant velocity like this, there's actually an equation that we can use. It's going to be displacement is equal to velocity times our change in time. Now let's verify that that works with this other region from two to four seconds. I'm still cross-hatching the region between the curve and the time axis. However, you might notice that right here, it is the area above the curve. So really, when I say under the curve, I mean between wherever that velocity function is and the time axis. But this, let's see if it still works. That's our change in position, ideally, from two to four seconds. The velocity in that region is negative two meters for every one second of time that passes. And we still have that two second time interval. Negative two times positive two is negative four meters because the seconds still cancel out. So ideally the change in position from two to four seconds is negative four meters, which is exactly what we see up top. So to summarize what we just did, to go from a position time graph to a velocity time graph, calculate the slope. Particularly if it is a constant slope region, like we are seeing here, we can just use rise over run as our calculation. And then that translates directly within that same time interval to the velocity time graph. Do that for however many unique slopes you have. Then when we're calculating the displacement from a position time graph, it is just going to be final position minus initial position. To calculate displacement from a velocity time graph, it is the area under the curve, which if it is a region of constant velocity, it's just velocity times time. Make sure that we are including the sine of velocity to account for positive or negative changes in position.